the Bible and science. Are we really hurtling through space on the planet Earth at 600,000 miles per hour? This is a short presentation on an impossible theory that, if true, would have wiped us all out long ago. Here is a picture of the Moon with Earth by NASA and it gives you a bit of a comparison. Are we being dragged in a giant spiral through space with all the other planets, moons, asteroids, etc. by our Sun? The first obvious thing in this sketch is the great Sun that is hurtling through space at 500,000 miles an hour, dragging the other planets including the Earth. All are spiraling through space. However, Earth is doing 66,000 miles per hour plus the distance of the spiral because as you can see all these planets are doing a circuit of the Sun. Some are doing a greater circuit than others. The Earth is doing a, 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 um, a diameter of about 188 million miles around the Sun. So if we look at this we can see that the Earth is one of the planets up in the uh, it's above the Sun and it's the black, it's called Earth there. And it's, we show you the Earth spiral. So we're not actually going round and round the Sun in a flat sort of orbit, which they always show you. In actual fact, it's the Sun that's apparently, according to this theory, hurtling through space at 500,000 miles an hour. And our planet is doing 66,000 miles an hour for 365 and a quarter days so it can get back to the same spot it started off at 365. 365 and a quarter days. But it's not the same portion of space because we've moved on billions of miles because we're hurtling through space, as I said, 500,000 miles an hour. In a further sketch, we show an additional feature of this crazy theory. The solar map can be much more complicated and traffic lights, I think, would be needed when you consider the following. There are 173 moons attached to all the planets, plus the eight planets following the Sun, plus their orbit and spiral speeds. There are numerous asteroids, comets, the Oort cloud, plus all sorts of space junk, all being hauled along by the Sun, apparently, and none of it's crashing into each other. All the space junk, all following the Sun, that is hurtling through space at 500,000 miles an hour, plus the speed of the planets, all following this giant spiral through space. Can you imagine? If you can imagine a spiral, you can imagine something that looks absolutely crazy. Is this possible? The word coming through <laughs> means really something here. Yeah. The Earth, according to the Copernican theory, is spinning at 1,050 miles per hour on its axis. There's a whole lot of things about that as well, which you know, you've got to look at and then say, is that possible? The Earth is circulating in the Sun at 66,000 miles an hour in 365 and a quarter days on an orbit 188 million miles in diameter. The Sun is, according to this theory, dragging everything through space at 500,000 miles an hour. Earth, including the distance of the spiral together with its Moon, is traveling at 600,000 miles per hour. Uh, on top of this, the oversized massive Moon traveling at over 2,000 miles per hour is dragging the Earth in smaller orbit as it pulls the Earth in a circle. Somehow, with all this going on, the oceans stay in their basins. I don't know what you think. This sounds absolutely impossible. I mean, could you imagine walking along with a pan, a pot, running as fast as you can, and while you're doing that, you, you're shaking the pot in a circle, all the water would come out over you. According to our scientists, it's easier to ignore the moon and treat it as an optical illusion than try and work out how it got there. Now here's the thing that no one talks about. The, the moon is a very large satellite. Actually, it is generally agreed it is far, far, far too large for the size of the Earth because it is a quarter of the size of the Earth. Scientists generally agree for the size of the planet and its gravitational pull, our moon should be no more than 30 miles in diameter, not 2,100 plus. There is no way it could have been captured by the Earth, plus it is made of different rocks to the Earth. So that theory where you always see uh, something hit the Earth and then come back and whack it again, that, uh, you know, the, the one, two, um, doesn't work because the rocks are different. Apparently there's no answer as to how or why it came to be there. In other words, the Moon is an impossibility except if it is a miracle placed there by the Heavenly Father 
for very good reasons. But I'm not going to turn, I'm not going to go into that here because that's a whole different study. The moon is far too big and heavy for Earth, according to NASA. Now here is the kicker: as the moon is far too big and heavy for the Earth, at 2,000 miles per hour, which it's doing around the Earth to to do its job and get around back to where it would be which will cause the Earth to oscillate, and you know, that's what I'm talking about. The Earth will oscillate in the direction the Moon uh, is pulling at the moment. So if you've ever played, for instance, swing ball, or you've ever danced with a, with a partner, let's say you've got your wife who's lighter, and you are bigger than her, let's say you weigh 250 pounds, and she weighs, say, 120, 130 pounds, you dancing with her and going in a circle means you've got to throw your weight backwards for you to counteract her weight, even though it's less than yours, otherwise she's going to drag uh, in the thing, she's going to constantly, constantly drag you forward. Now this is exactly what happens with the sun, the, the, sorry, the, the Earth. It has been dragged in this circle by the Moon, if this theory is correct. Um, this theory, the Copernican theory, because as you see, some of these figures are truly massive. If you have ever played string ball when you hit the ball, the steel pole to which the ball is attached lurches or oscillates in the direction the ball is, be is pulling it, as the moon does to the earth. Now, how do they know the suns have uh, planets around? They often say, well, the planet is oscillating. That proves the sun is there. So here you've got this mighty huge sun, and you've got this little planet, and that little planet is pulling it in the direction of the sun. So you can imagine what a moon a quarter of the size of the earth is doing to this planet in this whole um, context. Have you seen the latest wave sweeping across the land? It is the same with the moon, for everything is hurtling around at these speeds, plus the Earth would have this oscillation happening as fast as it travels around the Earth in just over 24 hours. If this were the case, can you imagine the oceans, what the oceans would be doing? They would be continually standing up with hundreds of miles high tsunami sweeping over islands and continents, and as a result, we would all be dead. There's just no doubt about it. This is a completely unreasonable theory. Now let's have a look at this picture of the spiral, the big spiral caused by the Earth going around the Sun, plus the small spiral caused by the Moon, or the oscillation as we could call it. And uh, what I'll try to do is represent this here in this little twirly thing there, is the small spiral, or the oscillation if you want to call it that way, because the, the Moon is going around the Earth and hauling it in this direction in all the time, if this theory is correct. correct. In this picture, the big spirals of all the planets circling the Sun can be seen in the thin black lines. But here is the thing that no one points out. The Earth is hauled in the direction of the Moon, as shown in the big black spirals. It makes the whole theory impossible, because the oceans would be all over the place. Suns are pulled around by planets an infinitesimal size to their Sun, as I've told you that early on. Um, so I'm not going to go through that again, but I just wanted to um, sort of give you that, you can read that yourself. As you can imagine, if the Earth is not geocentric, then it will be hauled around really fast. It's as if you had a bowl of water and were swirling it. Imagine what would happen to the ocean under such circumstances. Imagine as we plow through space at nearly 600,000 pounds per hour, and on top of this, the planet is doing a little jig, being hauled around by our huge oversized moon. We would not exist. There's just no way. The geocentric view is far less dangerous. The geocentric view was accepted till Copernicus and Galileo Galilei. Alternative heliocentric theory. Helium means a sun centre of the universe. We have just discussed. The Bible says in at least four places and another 60 places that the Earth is fixed and cannot be moved. There are four observable scientific experiments that agree with this theory. Um, and we include that in the book uh, or the bonus book with Help Me Find God. To get the facts of the heliocentric and biblical scientifically proven geocentric views, um, Help Me Find God, get that book, Help Me Find God, and you go to http colon set forward slash forward slash goo dot gl forward slash capital Z H small m 4 Z. And as I say, we give you a free bonus to get the facts of the helio and biblical biblically uh, scientifically proven geocentric views when you buy Help Me Find God, a book during the next week showing how Yahweh, God, actually planned the universe so the planet would not wipe us all out. Um, and this is very important. 
we've just accepted this, so did I, until I was alerted to it about uh, two months ago. Since then, my mind wouldn't let it alone, and I've done extensive studies in this. Thank you very much for listening.